Howdy, how's it going? I thought today we would break down this CSS stopwatch. If you haven't seen it already, this stopwatch works without any JavaScript. It's just CSS. So you can click it to start and stop, and then this button here will reset it. Yes, CSS may not be the correct tool to create a feature-rich stopwatch. However, CSS does have one advantage over the typical rudimentary JavaScript implementation where we might use request animation frame or set timeout or interval is that this stopwatch won't drift in time. It will continue to be accurate, which is pretty cool. Um, I'll link to a video in the description below where uh, some of the Google Chrome uh, devs go in depth about timers and different ways to create timers with JavaScript. And it's really interesting to see how they drift over time. So if you were to use set interval, every second over time that accuracy would uh, be lost whereas in this case we're just using a css animation and it stays accurate throughout time anyway enough of that let's dig into how this stopwatch works and how it's even possible now if we dig into the stopwatch demo code it can be a little overwhelming to see everything that's going on here so we're going to create a new demo that shows the mechanism for the timer so i've booted up a basic demo here we just have some basic styling and we have some text here let's do number and that will change and i don't know let's set a background of hsla 210 AE 70 05 like a lightish blue the magic comes from defining custom properties using the new app property syntax and that allows us to define types for our custom properties and what this does is gives context to the browser which allows us to animate certain custom properties. So if we start with a property and let's just call it number and we're going to say the initial value is zero and it inherits false and the syntax is going to be integer. And that is our custom property. Now we have a custom property number with an initial value of zero, which doesn't inherit the value from the parent, and it has a syntax of integer. We can also make this as the type, and technically now we have type styles to go along with TypeScript. Let's start by adding styles to our H1 element, and this is where the trick lies. So we're going to use a pseudo element, and we're going to use the after pseudo element. And to populate a pseudo element, we need to give it content. So let's say we were going to just throw a number in there and we did two well that doesn't work because content needs to be a string and how's this going to work because our number is an integer and we need it to be an integer because we need to animate one two three four you know and so on um so to prove that if we change this to a string then the number two um, appears right here as expected so how can we convert an integer to a string with CSS? Well, the key is to use counter. So what we can do, if we use h1 styling and we do a counter reset, and let's give our counter name the name uh, number counter. There you go. And we're gonna say that it counts our new variable number like that. So counter reset, number counter, var number. And then inside our content, we're going to use a counter to cast that into a string. So we can do counter, and then all we need to do is pass in the number counter. And now we can see the zero. So that's actually worked. That's cast it. So if we change this to, say, 50, now it's casting that value from number to string. Now all that's left for us to do is create the animation that counts the number. So let's create an animation and let's call it count and we'll say it goes for five seconds, uh, infinite, linear, and let's create a keyframe and we'll call it count. And we're gonna say it goes two and we're gonna change number to 100. And if we run that, now we have a counting number. It's animating up to 100, taking five seconds, and it will just keep going round. And if we change our HTML and take that out, now we just have a number counting up by itself. And we didn't actually need any scripts for this. No scripts, we're just using timing. So we could change this to anything. We could do one second, 
and it will do it really, really quick. There you go, one second to get up to 100. And this is how the main mechanism for the stopwatch works. So we're able to count these numbers up by casting number values into string values so we can use them inside pseudo element content. Now with a stopwatch, we need this number to actually be 0, 1, 0, 2, and you know, it always needs to be two numbers. We need to pad it with a zero. And that's actually really tricky to do. So it's actually easier to create two digits. So if we change this and let's say we call these digit one and there's digit two, and that will erase that for a second. But if we change this to dot digit and we do a second class change there, now we have two digits and they both animate. And that's because we have display grid set on here. We change this to flex. Bear with. And then we do a bit of justify. There we go. So there's two digits moving side by side. And if we change the value in the styles so it only goes to Let's say it goes to nine. Now there's no change in the the size. We've always got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's no double digit values. And then we might want to change the speed of them. So we could do something like digit nth of type uh, two, and we could change this. So the animation duration is 0 0.5 seconds. And let's set the default one to two seconds. And now they'll go at different speeds. So we can see the second one, and let's actually bump these up. They're really small. Let's go font size, uh, 5RM. And we can see the second one is moving much quicker than the first one. And all we need to do is change the timing. Now, if we switch back to our stopwatch, now we know how this works. Uh, we can actually break this down and see it. So how I've made this work is I have a different app property custom property declaration for each digit. So uh, millisecond tens, millisecond singles would be these two, seconds tens, second singles, and so on. And then every digit is the same. So every digit has the same um, styling to create that counter. So you can see it here. There's a, let's make this a little bit bigger. We use the same method, a counter reset with a counter name and a counter variable. And then we use an animation with a particular variable name, a variable duration that's infinite. And we use steps. So we use steps to make sure that we see every digit as we go along. And then a state. So the state in this case is used for the, the play state of the animation to say, hey, the stopwatch is running, or it's paused, or it's stopped. And then this is how we do it, scoped CSS variables. So for a millisecond, the singles, the duration of the animation should be 0 0.1 second because there's 100 milliseconds and a tenth of that to show it would be 10 steps, 0 0.1 seconds. And then we create a counter name and a counter variable which matches up to the property that we had up here. And we do this for all the digits. So, you know, uh, minute tens, that will take 3600 seconds to go around. There are six steps. The counter name is m10s. The counter variable is m10s. And then the same for the singles. That will take 600 seconds. And then each animation set here. Uh, these are pretty similar, but obviously for minute 10s, that will go to 60 minutes. It won't go to 100 minutes or 10 minutes on the, uh, the 10s. So that would go to 60 minutes. That will go to every 10 minutes and 60 seconds every 10 seconds and so on. So you can dig into that. It will make more sense if you take a look at the code, but that is how the stopwatch works. Now, the last part of this is actually how on earth does the mechanism work? Uh, that bit kind of feels a bit strange because we can click on, we can click off and then that will reset and it doesn't do anything again. And we can then pause and pause. There's a little trick here. Um, I can show this really quick. So. The trick is checkboxes, labels, and how your forms and HTML work. So I have a form, and this is pug, but if you check out the code pen demo, you can see the compiled HTML and CSS. But this is a form element. And the trick to form elements is that if you use a reset 
um, a type reset within a form, you can wipe the form state back to uh, how it originally was. So that's what I'm doing here. So button reset is this button here. So when you press it, it resets the form back to how it originally was. And then there are two labels here, and they're actually both in the same spot. So there's a little trick here. At this point, we're pressing one label, and as soon as we press that label, we're actually hiding the label with another label. And this second label just does pause, and it just flicks a checkbox on and off. So this is a type reset. These are labels that trigger a checkbox. And what we can do is I can show you the checkboxes. So if we find the styling here, put the checkbox, and we just remove, I think we can just remove the styling. And there we have it. So there's our text, and these are our checkboxes. So if we reset, and this is our type reset, it's hard to see because the text is kind of hidden there. Um, but if we press this, there you go, you can see the reset. And you see how the checkboxes went back? So if I hit that checkbox and hit that one, reset, it goes back. Now, the first checkbox, uh, the first label we press is start. So when we press this label, it checks that box. Now we can't actually press that one again. So every time we press it, it's just triggering the other label on top. And that is because if we find the styles for it, as soon as start is active, yeah, as soon as start is checked, then we move the start button underneath with Z index minus one. And that means we can't press it again until the reset button resets the Z index. Wait, so how does a checkbox hide another element or trigger an animation? Well, the trick is this little piece here. This little tilde is the general sibling combinator. And what that does is it will say, when this is checked, grab the next stopwatch content that comes after, and then set a CSS variable on that. And in this case, where we're hiding the button, we're saying, so when start is checked, find the label stopwatch start, and set the Z index to minus one. So we can we can actually see that in the, the markup. So input start. So this would become checked. And then we'd say, hey, right, here's the next sibling with stopwatch start. Set the Z index to minus one. So that's what's happening here. And that is the trick. That is the trick to it. And then these other parts where we're doing um, whether the whether these animations run, what we're doing is we're setting a state. CSS variable that is can either be running or paused, and that's also based on the state of our form. And then the rest is just styling it up, so just making it look like a stopwatch, so it's not just some not just some checkboxes. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. That is uh, a breakdown of how you make a CSS stopwatch with with nothing but CSS. If if you have any questions. Um, yeah, ping me about it, and if you liked the video, like the video, um, let me know what you think, and yeah, if you want to see more of these, let me know. That's it. Um, check out the code in the demo below, and I'll leave some links to other things. Yeah, stay awesome. See you later.